Brown and Sharp Automatic Screw Machine Operator Training Program. Lesson number five, speed and feed adjustments. As an operator of the Brown and Sharp Screw Machine, you will be responsible for installing the proper gears to set the speed of the spindle on the machine and to determine the rate at which the tools feed into the rotating bar of stock. Your layout sheet will call for a number of RPMs at which the spindle should rotate. The Brown and Sharp machine can run at two different spindle speeds during the machining of a part. There are four spindle speed gears that will be needed to determine this high and low speed. This chart located on the machine will indicate which gear should be selected to produce the RPM called for on the layout sheet. This drawing shows the upper and lower gear locations for the low speed. It also shows which shaft to use to cause the low speed to rotate in the opposite direction. The drawing on the right shows the gear locations for the high speed. To find the correct gear combinations, you must know how to use this chart correctly. For example, if you were required to have a high spindle speed of 2452 RPM, you would look across the top row. It indicates a combination of 7025 will give you this speed. The 70 tooth gear would be the left gear, and the 25 tooth gear would be the right gear. If the low speed was 508, you would look down the column until you find 508. Looking across, you will find the 5342 combination listed. The top of the column tells you the first gear listed is in the upper gear position. In this case, the 53 tooth gear then goes on the upper shaft and the 42 tooth gear on the lower shaft. The spindle speed gears are located here on the left end of the machine. You will find the gears stored in the door. Be sure to turn off the main power before replacing any gears. To remove the gears, loosen the locking bolt. The C-shaped washer can now be removed. The gears can then be slid off their shafts. Once the gears are replaced, tighten the locking bolts securely. You will also be responsible for replacing the feed gears. The purpose for the feed gears is to determine the rate at which the tools feed into the bar stock. They will therefore determine the cycle time required to produce one part. Your layout sheet will show the four feed gears needed. It will also indicate the time needed to produce one part. This chart indicates the rate of feed for various combinations of gears for the double aught machine. It also indicates the seconds required to produce one part. Check this information against your layout sheet to be sure the same combination of gears can be used on your machine. Always rely on the machine chart as your reference. The chart also indicates the proper place to mount each gear. The feed gears for the double op machine are located here behind this cover. The top gear is the drive gear. Two gears are to be mounted on the stud. The bottom gear is the worm gear. To remove the gears, you must first loosen the stud shaft nut. Then push the turret slide forward while loosening the adjusting nut. The gears can then be pulled from the shafts. Be careful when mounting the gears 
Serious damage will result if the gears are not mounted on their proper shaft. Be sure the gears mesh properly. Push in on the turret slide as you tighten the adjusting nut. The feed change gears for the number two machine are also on the right end of the machine. The chart indicates which is the driving and the driven shafts and the first and second stud gears. It also shows the time required to produce a part with various gear combinations. To remove the gears, you must loosen this locking nut behind the gearbox cover. The gears can now be pulled from their shafts. Be sure to mount the new gears in the proper location. Refer back to the drawing on the gear chart if you have any questions. One way to check is to be sure the second gear on the stud and the driving gear always total 120 teeth. If they do not total 120 teeth, you have a gear in the wrong location. Once the gears are properly mounted, close the cover and retighten the locking nut. This completes your television training tape on speed and feed adjustments. You may watch this tape as many times as you need. When you are finished, return to the operator booklet for your next step.